Hello? Hello, can I help you? Oh yes, hello. Um, I, I, I've um, got the number from the Charities Commission for Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, I hope I'm th through to the Kingdom Hall, is, is that right? No, you're not, but you're speaking to a representative. Can I help you? Oh yes, um, well it might not be convenient to speak at the moment. Um, I can leave my details if you want to speak some other time. I've been given literature at the carts and I'm puzzled about the dates in the Watchtower magazine. I've been told to go to jw.org, which I've done several times, and looked up articles about the dates. But um, I sort of just wonder if someone could help it, to explain the dates. What, what dates in particular are you referring to? Uh, 1919. Um, it's, uh, I was told to read a Watchtower, 15th of July 2013, uh, page 11 to 14, which talks about Jesus doing an inspection and a cleansing work between the years 1914 and 1919, and then choosing the the Watchtower Society as uh, in the year 1919 when he appointed a faithful and discreet slave. And I'm really puzzled about, you know, I mean, what what things were cleansed? I, I, I can't see anything that was cleansed from the organisation between 1914 and 1919. I have looked at the history books, including the Proclaimers of God's Kingdom book, and I, I just don't really see it. And I just wonder if, if someone might be able to help, please. Where are you based? Uh, <clears throat> um, um, central. I'm, I'm fairly central. <clears throat> you yeah, can arrange for someone to come and see you and, and share some literature with you and give you an explanation. Or you can fill in some details on dataview.org and it will go straight through to a headquarters. Is there a sign somebody to come out and see you? Um, information directly. I'm not really terribly keen on a crowd of people coming around to my house. I'm a former evangelical Christian and I left about nine years ago after terrible scandals in the churches, several churches that I had connections with. Um, and I really don't want um, groups of people coming to my house. So I, I prefer just at the moment to speak on the phone. I mean, if they point me to some article or something that I can read, I'm quite happy to do that. And you know, to learn, to learn, to learn more from there, um, if you're able to help. Okay. I can find some information out for you and give a bit more direction on, on where and which so you can obtain some information on that. Well, um, um, uh, yes. But you will have to give me some details, unfortunately. Pa pa pardon? You will have to give me some details. Right. Yourself, oh, okay, I can give you my name and you've got my number. My name is Robert Skinner. Do you want me to give you my... You've got my number? It's come up on your phone, I presume. Yeah. Yes? Hello? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm here. Sorry, just, just making a note here. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, so, just to be specific, you're asking for some information regarding 1919. What, what I'm specifically asking is, what did Jesus cleanse from the Watchtower Society between the years 1914 and 1919? Because I have looked at this, I spent many hours looking at this online, and I can't see one doctrine that was changed or corrected or... Um, changed between the years 1914 and 1919. The only one change I can see is the introduction of Judge Rutherford's Millions campaign in 1918. In 1918, as you'll know, he preached a sermon, Millions Now Living Will Never Die, which yeah. taught that Armageddon would happen in 1925, and he, he built a house in San Diego in California for Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, who are going to live, rise up from the dead. That's in the Millions book, page 88. That's the only change I can see. Everything they were teaching in the early 1920s was exactly the same as that which they were teaching before 1914. More relating, Mr. Spinner, to um, having the organisation um, ready and equipped to move forward. Um, so uh, the cleansing um, it entailed uh, readying the organisation for uh, to be used. Um, from 1919 onwards. So uh, there were certain things that were set straight. So in, in terms of... Could you name some things that were set straight? Sure. Uh, 1914 onwards, uh, the, there was a time where ones were involved in the war effort. 
Sorry? Uh, they didn't. Ones were involved with the war, in the war, 1914, for instance. The he, um, ones didn't actually shoot anybody in the war, but if they got drafted, uh, there were individuals, I believe, that went to the war, went along with the draft because it was a direct command uh, for the government and didn't quite discern the neutrality issue. That, that, that came about in time. Um, so there were a few things, a little bit of tweaking in terms of understanding um, scriptural doctrines and much of that did, did happen as time went on. I can find you some more information. Yes, yes, please. More specific please. Um, um, but they... they but, but, yes. Sorry, I interrupted you. I beg your pardon. Perhaps give you some direction on where you can find that in the literature. Yes, I have got... Um, I've downloaded a few of the articles. Um, so I've got July 2013. I've got November 2014. I've got the 2016 article. I forget which... I think it's March. And then I've got October 2019. And I've read these... Um, um, but I, I, I cannot see any cleansing that took place between those dates. I mean, when it, when it comes to neutrality in, in war, I mean, they weren't neutral in the First World War because Judge Rutherford, um, in the May 15th, 1918 Watchtower, and I bought the reprints, it's page 6,257, he, he talks about the Jehovah's, sorry, the, the International Bible Students, um, supporting the American war effort by buying Liberty bonds or Liberty loans and Rutherford encourages people to buy Liberty loans to support the American military in the First World War and he even talks about Bethel workers who are on a very small income uh, chipping together and paying 25 cents a month to buy a war bond or a Liberty loan between them so they weren't neutral in the First World War which is why the Standfast movement arose a great number of Bible students left um, because they were pacifists. They thought they shouldn't get involved in the First World War. But Rutherford, um, Judge, Judge, Judge Rutherford, was supporting the American military in the First World War. So, you, you know, the more I look, the more confused I become. I'm not trying to be difficult, but I spent many hours looking at this and I, I cannot see one doctrine that was changed in the year 1919. They were teaching exactly the same thing in the early 1920s that they were teaching before 1914. Nothing was cleansed. The only one change was the introduction of the Millions campaign. No, there was, there was a number of tweaks and amendments that happened. In terms of the neutrality, yes, there was some disparity between exactly what neutrality meant and the degree to mm -hmm. which it, it was to be taken. Mm -hmm. 1918, as you know, there was an imprisonment that happened yes. after Brother Rutherford yes. and a number who, because of their stand that they took. Could they have gone further? Well, in time, it was concerned that neutrality would be non-activity altogether. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there were some who felt, as you right, as you rightly said, there should be non-activity. There were others who thought that there was some way that they should appeal to the, the, the superior um, governments in, in, and, and obey certain direction. But in time, uh, it mm -hmm. was concerned exactly what the scriptures meant. But let me yes, obtain some information you. for you, Mr. Now and I can send that to. I mean, yes, you're not happy to have a face to face. I think that would be preferred rather than. I'd than prefer on the phone. phone and let's see how it goes. Maybe I might meet if it's not a gang of people. Um, yeah, I'm a former again. evangelical Christian and I. Um, it was rather unpleasant. But yes, um, I'll wait for you to get back to me. I didn't catch your name, sorry. It's. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk with this again. It might not be myself that comes back to oh, me. Oh, I see. So um, we'll, we'll give you some details. And... Okay. Um, we'll contact, right? Okay. Thank you very much indeed for your help. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks.